Ladies and gentlemen, I have one quick announcement that I need to make quickly. We do have judicial complaint forms available for those of you who would like to officially register a judicial complaint against Roy Moore. Um, the instructions are very specific on these complaints. First and foremost, I need to be 100% sure that no one signs these complaint forms until you get in front of the notary. We do have a notary on hand who is willing to notarize these documents and complaint forms for free to get them registered. The instructions are on the form. Uh, under statements and accusations, we have a suggested text to go with. Thank you, darling. Well, yeah, usually it comes right on to me, so I'm not used to having to. Um, <laughs> but we do, we do have. Got me. Thank you, darling. We do have suggested um, uh, information for the statements and accusation, uh, facts and allegations. Um, do not attach our copy to the form itself. Um, if you're going, if you're willing to go through the effort and you feel strongly enough about this, you're going to have to hand transcribe that into the form itself. We are not allowed to pre-fill out anything on these forms, but we have gone through and given you the facts and allegations that go with the supporting documentation, which we have already gone through the trouble of attaching for you on these forms. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that this is going to be a long and lengthy process. It's one of the reasons why our event is so long, is to give everybody a chance to go ahead, have this in their hand right now, participate in the movement together as a group while we're here, and go ahead and register an official complaint against Judge Roy Moore. Because as, as we all know, bullying and discrimination is not a ministerial duty. <laughs> taking, people, taking away people's civil rights is not a ministerial duty. Amen. And as a judge, you are to represent all the people fairly and equally. Amen. Um, that's the reason why we've done this. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I, I am going to ask you guys. You know, we 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 have done this on a shoestring and at the last minute, and out of our out, out of you know, pulled everything together with thumbtacks and screws and bubble gum. Um, we have got 50 copies of the complaint form here with supporting documentation attached and ready to go. What I'm looking for is 50 people who are willing to take the long and labor, laborious time to sit down, fill these complaint forms out, have them notarized in front of a legal notary, and have them registered today. Um, so I just wanted to get that quick announcement before we get started and get kicked off. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we're all here. Matter of fact, you, you snuck in on me while I was yakking at folks. I saw you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got an awesome panel of speakers lined up for you. First, I'd like to go ahead. Come up here, darling. I'd like to introduce my co-host for today's event, my co-MC, Nick Morgan Moore, local comedian. Hello. Uh, I, I'm local to somewhere. Um, now I'm local to here, and it's my pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, when I was planning on coming to visit the States, uh, marriage equality hadn't passed yet. And once it did, I was very happy for all of you that it is now a recognized right that all Americans who wish to be married, who are in love, have that right to go and do that. And then when I heard about this, I felt like I was in a time loop. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was in a time loop. I felt like I was in a time loop. Yeah. You know, like a time loop? Yeah. That's what I felt like. I felt like I was in a time loop. Yeah, we you know what time loop I actually time. want to get stuck in, though? That one in 2003 where Judge Roy Moore got kicked out. Yeah. There we go. So it's my pleasure to be here with you today, and uh, we have some amazing speakers for you all. Yes, we do. That's right. And you know what? We're working today on the instant replay for 2003. Can I get a hey man? Hey man! That's right, honey. You know, nobody has a market on God, especially the good parts. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, right here, right now, I'd like to go ahead and introduce to you our first speaker. Um, this gentleman has been personally affected by the behavior of Roy Moore. Um, I cannot begin to imagine the struggle that he has gone through. Um, he, were, he and his partner thought that they had everything covered. They had gone through all the extra loops that we had to go through before we could legally get married. They had done everything right. They had done what they were supposed to do. 
and it was not until after this man lost his life, the love of his life that he found out that the rug was being pulled up from underneath him and the man with his hands on the edge of the fringe was Roy Moore. If you would, please welcome to the stage, Paul Hard. Who'd have thought this is how the pieces fit? You and I shouldn't even try making sense of it. I forgot how we ever came this far. Seems we had reasons, but I don't know what they are. Blame it on my heart. Cause love moves in mysterious ways. It's always so surprising when love appears over the horizon. I love you for the rest of my days. And still it's a mystery how it ever came to be. Because it only proves love moves in mysterious ways. Now, I, I am not in good throat at all because of all the funk in the air. And I'm certainly that a lot of you could do a better job of that than I. But I think a lot of people here can attest to the fact that love is surprising. You don't look for it. It's something that happens. It sweeps you up. And that was what happened with me. Now, I have to tell you uh, a couple of stories that you may not have heard. Some of you have heard my story. You, you may uh, have heard how that David and I were married in, in May of 2011. And uh, shortly after that, just a month and uh, two months and two weeks, uh, David was killed in a tragic car accident on I-65 North while he was heading to work. He was an amazing man. A big red-headed bear. And... We were, he, he took me to Gatlinburg in, in, uh, around Valentine's Day a few years ago. And he proposed to me there. Now don't get too excited because that was probably one of six times that I said no. <laughs> and we had a great time. It was beautiful. The snow was falling and we were walking through the woods up there and just enjoying the beauty of God's creation. And as we're walking along and just looking, because we don't get that kind of snow in Alabama. And, and so we're looking, and David looked up at some of the snow in the trees, and his feet shot completely out from under him, and he landed in the snow on his back. And I said, oh, baby, are you okay? He said, I'm fine. I said, don't move. He said, no, I'm fine. I said, no, no, don't move. This is a great picture. Tell you where we're going. <laughs> he, uh, he used to say, and he actually put this on some of our wedding stuff, Love is finding that one person that you want to annoy the rest of your life. And he was great at it. And he was that one person. I had a, uh, had a student ask me a while back, and they were looking, I guess they're looking for wisdom, I'm not sure. They said, how did you know? And I said... Well, I guess I knew when one of my good friends that after six years of us being together and I said, I don't know about marrying him, it's, it's a little sudden. <laughs> and they said, honey, you are married. You just don't want to admit it. And I started thinking, he's the last face that I want to see at night before I go to bed. He's the first face that I want to see in the morning. When I'm getting on a plane and flying somewhere, He's the last person that I wanted to be in touch with to say, I'm on my way. Be praying for me. Be thinking about me. And when I landed, the first person I wanted to talk to was David. And all through the day, whether he was at work or I was at work or both of us were at work, when something came up that I wanted to spend that moment with him, I was texting, I was calling all through the day. So how do you know? You start realizing that this is the person that my life is bonded to. And making it legal is just the next step. So walking out onto a beach, at Marconi Beach in Massachusetts, 
and saying I do was probably one of the easiest things to do after that. Let me share with you a little bit of an unknown part of my story. Some of you know how I was blocked at the emergency room and not allowed to see my husband. What you don't know is that those were good people. No one there was there to hurt me. These are healers. And in the way that it is kind of played up in the press, some things get lost. And one of the things that was lost was is that when I was finally allowed to see my husband, the nurse, orderly, I don't know what their position was. These days you see somebody in scrubs, you just don't know. And uh, the person behind the counter looked at me with a look of anguish and said, I am so sorry. I would have let you go in there if I could have. And the fact of the matter is, is that laws like that hijack the good, kind hearts of people. Yes. That's right. Now you want to talk about a higher authority. A law was broken that day. A law that I saw broken on the face of that person. That against the law of their heart, the law of mercy and compassion that they had within them, they felt that they had to stand in my way as my husband lay there. So a higher law was broken. And if you wish to appeal to a higher authority... If you feel that you are not bound by the Supreme Court of these United States, then I appeal to a higher authority than that. The law of your heart, the yeah. law of compassion, the law of mercy, the law of grace that says we don't have to treat another human being with disrespect or unkindness or bigotry because within ourselves we know that there is a law that is written in the heavens that says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen. If you wish to appeal to a higher law, then appeal to the law of love. And for God's sake, let's not let something like this happen to another human being. Thank you for being here today. Everyone, that was Paul Hard. He's a personal friend and an amazing human being, and we all feel for you, and we all love you. Just quickly before we move on to our next speaker, there is free coffee at the Montgomery Humanist table over here. We're not charging. Go on, get a cup, heat up, and uh, we'll move right along to the next speaker. The next speaker is a reverend from the, Uni from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Tuscaloosa. His name is Fred Hammond. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you for your story. Unfortunately, it is a story that is repeated way too many times. Yes. Way too many hearts have been hurt by this ban that is continually thrown in our faces. I'm a minister of a minority faith in Alabama. Unitarian Universalists are not a Christian faith. So when a judge says that their faith is superior and their rules and their doctrine must be honored above all other faiths, that goes against our founding parents of this nation who wrote that Congress shall make no law regarding preferential treatment of religion. Amen. No law. No law. I don't expect other people of other faith to agree with my faith, to agree with, with what I believe personally. But I also don't expect for their beliefs to be imposed on my faith. Make it plain. I don't expect for my faith to be imposed on anybody else's faith. Thank you. Faith is of the heart. 
It is what drives us individually. It is personal. It is developed within ourselves. So to have a group of people, in this case, a conservative group of people, who have a very narrow view of what is true and not true, to tell me that I can't love a person of my choice, that I can't choose to marry who I love because it violates their faith, that very act, that very statement violates my faith of who I am as a Unitarian Universalist. It violates the ability to have the freedom of religious expression. And that happens every day in Alabama. Not just on this issue, but on every issue. We're told, no, you can't do that because it violates my faith. You can't do this because it violates my faith. You can't have an abortion. You can't do, you can't do that. You can't do other things. You can't use marijuana because it violates my faith of intoxication. You can't do... Yeah, read Harry Potter. You can't read Harry Potter. Because why? It violates your faith? Then don't read Harry Potter. And if you don't want to marry somebody of the same gender, then don't. But religious freedom states that I have the ability to practice my faith and to have my faith honored by the law of the land. This nation was founded on the principle of freedom. And we need to continually reinforce that that freedom is for all people. Amen. Not just for Christians, not just for a minority sect of Christians. Right. Make it plain now. Because many of you here are, are Christians. I'm assuming that. But many, you know, maybe I shouldn't assume that. But I'm assuming that many of us here are Christians. Amen. And so, your faith needs to be honored. Your faith needs to be respected by the law of the land. And when the ban was struck down as unconstitutional, it meant that your faith was right. being honored. Your truth was being honored. Your inherent worth and dignity was being recognized for who you are as people of this nation. We need to send a message, not just by getting rid of Roy Moore, and he needs to be gotten rid of. Amen. He needs to go. Because he is violating the constitution of this country. Yes, make it plain now. He is... He, is, he needs to be not just gotten rid of, he needs to be disbarred and not allowed to practice law any longer because he is, he is violating the very oath that he took as, as a lawyer, as a judge. He is violating his own oath. Yes. He is violating his own creed that he swore to uphold. And he needs to be held accountable for that. He needs to be held accountable to the people of this nation that he is going to uphold the law, not his personal beliefs. His personal beliefs he can take to his church and he can preach those there and be honored there, but not in the public arena. Amen. It is important, it is important for our faith to be honored. 
and for our humanity to be honored, and for our love to be honored. It is important that we honor each other's inherent worth and dignity. Yes. And that we do it with our own faith. And we do it with our own dignity. And we work to make sure that our freedoms are guaranteed for all. For every person who wishes to be married in this land regardless of who they love. That love, as Paul mentioned earlier, is a higher law. It is a supreme law because it governs our hearts. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much, friend. Um, and, and you are right. There are many Christians here. Can I get a shout out from the Christians here? Yes, As a member of the Episcopal Church myself, I remember going to Sunday school. Do y'all remember going to Sunday school? Yes. Well, then let's repeat after me. Let's remind Roy Moore that one of the, the duties of a minister is to teach their congregation to love thy neighbor as thyself. 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 Yes. Now, this time, ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to introduce another member of the clergy to our, to um, to the stage. If you would please welcome to, for me from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Montgomery, Alabama, give a warm welcome and a big round of applause for Reverend Lynn Hopkins. All right, How's, there we go. I am, like Fred, a Unitarian Universalist. He and I are both members of a tradition. Unitarians and Universalists were established early in the history of this country before it was a country as people like the Baptists who came here seeking religious freedom from church hierarchy, who came here looking for a space in which all people are free to worship the God that they find to be real. Yeah. Unitarians and Universalists have established themselves in history as a people who respect the Christian tradition and the Christian scripture. That is to say we take it seriously rather than literally because you cannot do both. All language, all translation is interpretation. If you accept that the initial writers of the scripture received word directly from God, more power to you. That's not what you're reading. If you believe that everyone who translated the scriptures from the original many languages into Greek and Latin and English, and more modern English, if you believe that every one of those people had the hand of God upon them, more power to you. But nonetheless, all translation is interpretation. If you have read your Bible, then you know that reading the same passage one time speaks differently to you from reading it another time. That is the power of the living text. So I am here today to stand up 
as a follower of Jesus for the teachings and the love and the compassion of Jesus against the scoundrels and liars and hypocrites who would use his name to oppress people. You are likely aware, if you were raised in any church environment, you are likely aware that Jesus is not recorded as having made any statement regarding homosexuality. Yep. Most of us realize that the idea of sexual orientation didn't even exist in human science until the 19th century. So. While there were acts of same-sex contact, there was no notion that people had same-sex attraction. So naturally, the people in Jesus' day thought that was bizarre and unnatural. We know better today, and God has always known better. Yes. <laughs> Now, what we do know that Jesus is on record as addressing is the act of some people, in particular religious leaders, conservative religious forces, calling out the personal and sexual sin of others. There is a passage in Luke that captures Jesus' view of this behavior very clearly. And you may remember, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And when they dispersed, he asked her, does anyone condemn you? And then he concluded, and neither do I. That's the Jesus I know. I honor the humanists. I love my humanists and I got a bunch of them in my congregation. Because like Jesus and all the major prophets, we don't teach a particular creed. The word talks about behavior, how we love one another and respect one another. And that's what we teach and strives to practice. And I understand how people in today's society would be so embittered and driven from the church because those Pharisees, those snakes that Jesus called out so long ago are among us today. But thanks be to God, the truth remains. Yes. That was Reverend Lynn Hopkins from the Unitarian Universalist Church of Montgomery. She's actually my reverend. I'm one of those humanists she was talking about. Thank you so much. I just want to announce that at the end of this meeting, we're going to have a mass wedding. So anyone who would like to stick around and participate, then please do stick around and participate. You know, when they passed marriage equality, I was so happy for all of you, but I was a little bit sad that I didn't get to participate in any of these really fun rallies. So I'm very happy to be here today, celebrating with all of you. You know, it got me thinking, how far can Judge Moore turn back the clock so that there's some other parties that I can join in on? <laughs> can he decide that we didn't actually go to the moon in 1969 so we can have a moon landing party? Or can he kick it back to when we all had those really fun wigs and rejoin the British Empire so we can all go and throw tea in the river? Because that sounds like fun. I did hear there's another tea party going on now, but it doesn't seem anywhere near as fun. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here with you today. And I'd like to announce our next speaker is Chuck Miller, who is the Regional Director of the American Atheists. So, they put the atheist up right after all the ministers. <laughs> wow, how do I follow that? I love you, Chuck. 
So I'm standing here today as an ally. I'm a heterosexual man. I've been married for 35 years. And for 34 years, it was a privilege. It was a privilege because not everyone had the right to marry who they chose. And I'm here today because human rights are human rights. Yeah. Yeah. Marriage rights are human rights. Yeah. And I'm here to speak out against Roy Moore. Roy Moore needs to be removed. Roy Moore has supreme contempt for the law in America. He has contempt for the law. He has contempt for the court. He has contempt for the Constitution. He has contempt for you. And he has contempt for me. Right. A man like Roy Moore may not be taking away your rights today. He's not taking away my rights today, although I'm sure he would like to. And if he's not taking away your rights today, he'll take them away tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Anytime you come up to a moral question that disagrees with Roy Moore's private interpretation of his Bible, he'll take them away. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Are you married to a divorced person? <laughs> he's, he can pull scripture out right. and, and tell you that's, that's adultery and, and you're not legally married. He'll do that. He'll burn books. He might even burn people. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. yeah don't laugh. I mean, these, don't, don't, don't laugh. We're, we're getting to that. When someone uses his interpretation of the law and sets himself above the entire government, that's tyranny. Yes. And when they use religion as their justification,